Before starting spectroscopy properly, we're going to cover some very basic physics. And before starting that, we're going to start with units and dimensions. So a dimension is one of the seven basic physical quantities that we can measure. These include length, time, mass, and temperature is the most common, uh, while things like force and energy are actually derived from these. So seeing what these derived quantities are made of and how they can then combine is known as dimensional analysis. So we can multiply units together and the quantity changes. For instance, mass multiplied by speed leads to momentum. We can also divide units. So in this case, a force spread over or divided by an area leads to pressure. But through dimensional analysis, we can also show that energy divided by volume leads to the same thing. Incidentally, this is why what the PV part of the ideal gas law is getting at, as both sides here are equal to energy. More generally than multiplying and dividing, we can integrate and differentiate quantities. Uh, this is fairly straightforward calculus, but is a more powerful concept to talk about because values can change continuously. An obvious example is speed. Speed is the first derivative of your position with respect to time or the gradient at any point. And because there is a different speed at each point, that could generate a new graph too, where the y-axis is the gradient of the other. If we keep on differentiating with respect to time, we get distance, speed, acceleration, and then some additional quantities with various non-standard names, which are occasionally useful. But they're here mostly to show that we can keep on doing integration and differentiation to these qualities here. Now, an important set of relationships that we'll come across in understanding spectroscopy and quantum theory will be the relationships around energy. Well, the base unit here is mass uh, length squared and per time squared, or times speed squared, which is E equals mc squared, if you want to remember it. Now, because the base unit here includes time and space as dimensions, we could integrate or differentiate across time and space dimensions separately. Uh, we'll ignore mass for now because there isn't too much interesting down that avenue. Now, the relationship between energy and force is the integration and differentiation with respect to distance. Um, this may sound counterintuitive because if you push for a really long time, it feels like you're expending a lot of energy. But if something sits still on a surface, it exerts its downward force due to gravity and the surface exerts an equal upward force no energy is being used there because there's no movement. There's no exchange of kinetic and potential energy, uh, which we'll get onto later. This fact is clearly reflected in the units and the dimensional analysis. We can also fill out a few more of these qualities and quantities uh, by differentiating and integrating in different dimensions. And again, we can keep going, although not every combination is physically meaningful and some do have more than one use, meaning or interpretation. Uh, also note that because speed is made of both time and space dimensions, integrating and differentiating with respect to speed would be a step diagonally along these quantities. Now, practically, this only works in a really straightforward way if your units match. And so far, all of these have been in standard SI units. Uh, these are internationally agreed on and standardized, meters, seconds, kilograms, and so on. Other units exist and could be combined, but then you need to be really careful that you're, what they, they match up when you're calculating by hand. So tapping in numbers purely because you've memorized equations and haven't thought about units will give you the wrong answer. Uh, it's not always as obvious as saying miles divided by hours is the same as meters per second. But what we'll see later is that the rotational constant B, which is a measure of energy, and that energy can be expressed as a wave number or reciprocal centimeters. But if you get that speed of light as meters per second instead, you end up with reciprocal meters, two orders of magnitude out from what you expect. Uh, even worse, if you don't convert a molecule's mass to kilograms, and that's a very common error, uh, and stick in atomic mass units instead, you'll get complete garbage out. The calculation just won't work, or at least its physical significance uh, will be a little weird. Now, 
if you lay out your units correctly and rehearse your equations before you do any calculator tapping, however, you won't necessarily have this problem. So pay attention to your units and use them properly.